nice thing about this formula, we know this is 4.2. So, we have an equation that relates x and d, which is really nice. Um, and we're going to just about now going to get a second equation. The second equation now, it says that kb, just like we do a normal ice table, is the products times the, on the top divided by the reactants. And now I just plug in straight from the ice table. We've got a do this in a slightly different color. There's that value, that value, and that one. I'm going to plug in. And I know Kb also. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 equals x squared over d minus x. Uh, you can use a quadratic here. But I'm just going to assume, like we usually do, that x is a lot smaller than d. We usually do that whenever it's a weak acid uh, or a weak base. You know it will work when kb is tiny. So I'd say just in general, unless d is D is usually between like a counting number or like a half or something like that or 0.2. If this is like t smaller than 10 to the minus 3, this assumption will usually work. Okay, so if this is a small number, meaning 10 to the minus 3 or smaller than 10 to the minus 3, definitely. So, assuming that, that causes this formula to be 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 equals x squared over D. Okay, again, we're trying to find D. So what I would do is take, so here's one equation, I'll circle it. Okay, we got that. Our other equation is right here. We have two equations and two unknowns. What I would do is just take this one right here, solve for D. D is going to equal x, oh, I guess I should say 100x divided by 4.2. There's d from that percent ionization. So I'm going to take that. Uh, well, I guess I should have solved for x, actually. x, the other way, is d times 4.2 over 100. I actually want to solve for x because this is going to put x right there. Since we're assuming that x is really, really small relative to d, can't we just say it's 1.8 times 10 to the 5 is equal to 1 over d? Can you say that again? I lost that. Okay. So 1.8 okay. times 10 to the negative 5 is equal to 1 over d because x is really, really small. If uh, that assumption wouldn't work because x being really, really small, it's actually close. You're saying it's like one, you know, one over d, but it's actually closer to zero, probably. Yeah, does that make sense? So that quite that wouldn't quite work. However, you want to solve this, you've got to use these two equations and two unknowns. The textbook does it, or the solutions manual does it, a slightly different way. But they end up getting uh, 0 0.00, for this example, D is 0 0.0098 molar. Yeah. So you would just need to use the percent you got. Does that kind of work for everybody? You can, however, you want to solve these two equations into a node, that's totally fine with me. And then uh, you'll see if you look at the solutions manual, they put they incorporate this part in here. So that's kind of like one equation. Whatever. Doesn't matter to me.